Hey guys, so today I want to show off the uh, optics plate that I ordered from, uh, I think it's called Optics Trade. It's a website in Europe and uh, it's manufactured by Tony System. And uh, I want to, you know, show off this optic plate and try to install it um, on my Beretta 92X Performance, replace this guy. And um, so first thing, the kind of a uh, open box experience for this optic plate from Tony System. Man, this one looks really, this, this quality. Uh, it looks very well made, carefully crafted, and it's very considerate because not only they offered you this plate, uh, and they also considered all the stabilization pins that you, you need to install for your uh, optics. Uh, basically, what that means is, you know, so if you look at the Tony Systems diagram, you know, usually... Uh, when you put an optic, uh, the red dot on it, you will fasten into the screws to, 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 to you know, fasten the optics onto the plate. And also usually for the plate, uh, at the front, there are two kind of a semi holes as well, where, you know, you can put the pins on top and then it will come up and then fit into the kind of the holes at the back of the, of the optics in the front so that you have four points. Uh, stabilizing the uh, your red dot because the screws that you fasten down uh, physically or mechanically their job is to fasten uh, and put the force downward right uh, the screws job is to, is not to pre to prevent the optics from moving back and forth so therefore if you have another two points at the front to help fully uh, stabilize and that will definitely help and uh, uh, relieve a lot of pressure from the screw so that is really uh, considerate from Tony system where they provide all different kind of pins you know stabilizing pins for different kind of uh, optics right so if you see there are different kind of optics and they, they, they tell you which pin to use and which screw to use so this is a combination of pin with a screw so this is really good and um ah, okay so this is my this is my uh, type a package and then i also ordered a type b package as well because i want just all possibilities to um, to the stuff that I, that I bought. So anyhow, um, this is W, what does it mean? Anyhow, um, so next I will try to remove the uh, rear sight from this guy and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to use this wheel. Uh, not wheeler, this wire gear, the thumb, uh, no, the, the site removal tool to get rid of the site. So there's some setup work need to be done. First of all, let's dummy rounds, by the way. Dummy rounds, snap cap, you know what that is? Because I've received some comments on YouTube that, hey, you shouldn't put rounds inside your gun. That's bad demonstration, man. That's snap cap. If you don't know what a snap cap is, I can't help you. So let's first remove this guy. Gosh, I think I've I have forgotten how to do this. All right. Remove the barrel. Alrighty, now we just need to set it. 
Let's get four pieces of cloths to help protect the slide from getting scratched. All right. First, lift this thing up. This is the one that fastened the top of the slide. Okay, let's see whether we can slide it in. Oh, a little bit more. Okay, now maybe the camera angle is not good, but you know. Okay, so how about I just completely take off the top part so that you can see how I'm aligning this, this thing. So put it here, let's put some class on the side. Okay, one piece is good. It's good enough. And let's fasten it. I don't think it needs to be perfect, you know, but there are lines at the side to show you whether you are, you know, completely aligned or you're missing something. It's not fully aligned or whatever, but I think it's roughly as long as it's not super tilted or angled, that should be fine. And you can also compare the space from here with the left side and the right side to see whether you're, so for example, right now, I'm a little bit towards the right side, which is, you know, fine. Um, or I think you could also just lean all the way toward one side uh, actually, how about we just try to just let it lean against one side and fasten only one side because we are removing the rear side. So this way it will be fully, yep. Um, now let's put this thing on over the top. And then we need to adjust. Let me see. Papers. Cloth is on the way. Okay, move this thing over here. And put this back. Let's see first whether this guy is aligned. No, it's not. It needs to come. The slide needs to come forward a little bit so that the pusher can be pushed right on the side of the rear side. So if we imagine it to start pushing from here, Let's make sure it's not touching anywhere. Let's see if it were to push right here. It's not touching the dovetail, which is good. Let me see. Yep, I think this is where we need it to be. Tighten it a little bit. And to adjust the, the height, if we need this to go a little bit higher, we can come to the... Yep. 
let it raise up a little bit. This top, this top knob is to uh, make sure your pusher is on the right height because this guy is pushing down your slide and make sure this at, this at the right height. Let me see, we can lower it a little bit just to make sure it's pushing on the right edge and it's not touching anything. Let me see. Yep. Uh, at some point we will need it to go a little bit higher, but it's okay. Higher a little bit. Okay, I think this is good. Now, let's have the right height. Let's tighten these two knobs. By the way, for Beretta, Beretta 92 series, I think it's uh, to remove rear slide uh, side. You need to go from right to left. By the way, you probably need to remove this screw as well because I see it's kind of also uh, anchoring on the on the middle of the uh, dovetail to serve as the purpose of adjusting the height as well as you know stabilizing or fastening the uh, the sight. So anyhow, just remove that, and I don't think I don't think there's anything else that I need to remove from the rear side itself. I think that's the only thing. All right, let's now try. Readjusting it. All right, let's see. Everything is in place, all fastened and tightened. Now it's just a matter of turning the wheel. Okay, let's go. You know, to some people, this rear side is really hard to push out, which is true. So let's see, do we have luck? Like you really need to put a lot of force to it and get it moving. Yeah, I started to move. If you see, I don't know whether you can tell. Yep. Started to move, not too bad, not too bad, and uh, do a couple of turns and check it and make sure the pusher is not really blocked or grinding on any slide material so that you know you're not messing. Okay, it's just getting easier and easier until you feel it's free, free turn. There we go, yay. I think removal has been done. All right, all right, all right, let's see. Yep, it's been pushed out just fine. All right. Put the screw back so that it can I don't lose anything. We relieve this guy from here. See there's no mark or anything because it's all well protected. Now let's wipe the dovetail. Oh man, this looks neat. Pretty good. So we're, we'll do some cleaning and oiling and then we'll start mounting the plate. Okay, next we have the vise here and uh, have the slide mounted to the slide, uh, to, to the vise and we have the optic plate here just to be positioned into the dovetail a little bit just to get it starting right and now we need to kind of lock it in 
And there's a tool uh, developed specifically for this from Tony System, but we'll try to just knock it over. So use this one as a rubber kind of buffer and see how it goes. Okay, I'm finally done. So that took me a lot of effort. You know, removing the uh, factory re rear side is you know, pretty easy, but hammering this guy in, man, it's uh, it took all I have. So I use a big hammer and keep hammering in until is absolutely in the middle so the more you knock in the more contact surface there is and the the bigger resistance uh there is so yeah um what's good is tony system it has this uh opening for for the uh for this component i don't know what it's called but basically you can use this one as a um uh, indicator to see whether uh, your the plate is right in the middle, right? Because this hole, uh, and you can pretty much aim the square thing that comes up, or you know to see whether it's uh, right in the middle. So pretty much that's what it is. And if you are paranoid, you can just also use a calibrator or whatever that uh, thing is called to measure the distance, right, and see whether you're in the middle so that's pretty much uh it for hammering and now we're gonna put those set screws in and put some blue loctite as usual um, this is fairly easy find the right Find the right size and then put some cleaner and then just twist it like this. Get all the rust and the dirty stuff out. All right, once it's absolutely clean, we'll put some blue Loctite I think you could put red, but in this case, really doesn't matter because it's so hard to punch it in. Um, it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, the normal vibration will not put it off off place. Uh, so blue should be fine. This is probably a little bit more than uh, I should apply. Yep, definitely more, but that's fine. Just wipe it away. And this guy. Just like how you mount the red dot, let's put, I think about 15 or 12 inch pound is good enough. I'll do 12 because I don't really want this set screw to strip. I think this is a little bit too small. It's not the exact size. So for this kind of uh, thing, you always want to find the, the exact size so that you don't um, damage the uh, damage the thing. Let me see which one of these fits, fits better. Yeah. 
both of them have some wiggle room so I guess it doesn't matter That's why I don't really want to over overturn it, otherwise it might damage the uh, st strip, the set screw, and then you'll be in trouble, right? But although I don't think it will be uh, ever taken off again, so it doesn't matter to me. Now, this is done, and we can apply some oil and then start to put the red dot on. So for example, here I have my uh, Venom. I know you guys will say Venom sucks, but to me it actually has been working fairly well. It's a cheap, it's a cheap option. And it works really well for me. So let's see, it does, um, here it says Venom is X and 2, X is here, but I really don't think it can, oh, it will fit, okay, let's find X. These are set pins. Alright, so just put it like down like this, I guess. Yep, yeah, the stud facing up and the little pointy stuff. Little pointy stuff will face down at the plate. Oh, come on. All right. So they're in there. And if you anchor them, there we go. It's really, I'm telling you, this is super solid fit. It, it barely moves. Okay. Now we just need to find the screws and put them in. Okay. So we found the matching screws. And now let's put it on. So same process, clean the thread and put blue Loctite. This time you don't need to put a whole lot, just a small amount. Okay, let's see. The pins are in place. All right. And let's put a screw in. This guy. Probably a little bit too much. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, just hand down, not super tight. Just inspect everything, all the contact surfaces all look good. Now let's tighten with the uh, torque wrench. T 
2015 it is and it is set the uh set it to 12 inch pound i think that's good tighten it break all right that's it check it out Beretta 92X Performance, the uh, non-optic ready version with compensator, um, <laughs> laser, and red dot. This is so good. So good. Um, next is to go to the range and zero it and then really enjoy. And... Dummy rounds, okay? Again, dummy rounds. So that I can point kind of to, not exactly to myself, but I want to check, like, what does he look from the front? Uh, like here? Yep. All right, that's about it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.